So for example, and these things breed like crazy. And as time goes by, the insects became, become more cohesive and the bands become concentrated in a smaller area. So in, a de in the desert locust plague in Africa, the Middle East and Asia that lasted from 1966 to 69, the number of locusts increased from two billion to over 30 billion over two generations. But the area that they covered decreased from 100,000 square kilometers to 5,000 square kilometers. So with that type of concentration, so huge increase in the numbers, and they get concentrated and focused in a smaller area. So when, they move, when they're on the move, they basically destroy everything that they come across. So this is the uh, solitary uh, grasshopper, solitaria. And this is the, uh, so these are the non-swarming um, form. And then when they start to swarm, uh, the serotonin kicks in, they become super aggressive. And these are the gregaria swarming phase of the locust. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is actually, uh, this happens with a number of different species around the world on all continents except for Antarctica and North America. Okay, what is really, and they can migrate long, over long distance. Okay, a major inf infestation covered much of Western Africa in 2003-04. Unusually heavy rain in the desert set up favorable conditions for swarming. So there were outbreaks in Mauritius, Mali, Niger, Sudan, you know, and then they moved north to Morocco and Algeria. Then they crossed Africa, appearing in Egypt, Jordan, and Israel and uh, you know, had huge crop damage, $2.5 billion worth of crop damage. You know, they've done, they swarmed in Madagascar in 2013, um, covering half the country by March, 2013. What is fascinating is there's a, there's a species that went extinct, but was in North America. The Rocky Mountain locust was one of the most significant insect pests but it became extinct in 1902. Okay, um, and this is actually uh, fascinating. And then there, you know, there's uh, some of the plagues that are mentioned in the past, um, irregular out out uh, breaks of locusts. Um, you know, it talks about some of the worst um, cases. Uh, here, here's an example: the spring of 1747, locusts arrived outside Damascus ate the majority of crops and vegetation. You know, they came like a black cloud, blocking out the sun, covering everything, the trees and the crops. Now, the North American locust, the Rocky Mountain locust, is very puzzling because it swarmed throughout the west of, of the U.S. and parts of Canada in the 19th century. There was something called Albert Swarm um, in 1875, uh, which covered... 198,000 square miles, that's phenomenal, or 510,000 square kilometers, greater than the area of California. So these locusts swarmed in 1875. Uh, the weight of them, 27.5 million tons, 12.5 trillion insects. And then, so this is in 1875. 25 years later, these things be, were extinct in North America. How do you go from a population of 12.5 trillion in a swarm to zero to going extinct? Um, you know, it's a bit of a mystery. I mean, maybe the breeding grounds got destroyed from um, gold miners in uh, destroying the underground eggs, or, you know, it's sort of, it's a mystery. I mean, here's, here's some images of a locust swarm in England. So, you know, all continents have, have been hit, basically. Uh, but it's interesting that the North American version has, you know, went, went extinct. Um, you know, so how do you control them with, well, here's some flamethrowers being used in an outbreak in, in the Middle East in 1915, spraying with uh, pesticides and things. Um, and of course, you know, if a locust destroy your crop, you can always eat them. They're, they're edible insects. Many cultures in the world consume insects, and uh, they've been used as food throughout history. So here's skewered locusts in uh, China. 
Okay, so you can always eat the things. So a couple, um, you can a couple interesting links here. So you know, 2003 to 2005, Africa locust infestation. Um, to give you an idea of the size of some of these locust swarms, there was one swarm in Morocco um, that was 230 kilometers long. This this should be 150 kilometers wide. Contained an estimated 69 billion locusts. Okay. Um, in this particular swarm, um, and uh, you know these things can cause huge. They can cause famines. They can wipe out countries' uh, food supplies. They have in the past. This is the 2013 Madagascar locust infestation. Um, you know their version. You know, in March 2013. It, 50% of the country was infested by swarms of locusts, each swarm consisting of more than a billion insects in this plague. Cost, you know, huge amounts of money to fight them with pesticides and caused huge economic losses. And this is in the 1915, um, you know, swarms of locusts from March to October, swarms of locusts stripped areas in and around Palestine Mount Lebanon in Lebanon and Syria of almost all vegetation. The infest, you know, it basically, it really affected the food supply. Of course, this is World War I going on and it caused famine. Uh, it caused price increases in, um, you know, even in food in North America. So, you know, flour, Flour cost 15 bucks a sack. Potatoes were six times the ordinary price. You couldn't get sugar and petroleum and money. Uh, they were unprocurable. Okay, and there was a great famine of Mount Lebanon. It killed 200,000 people. Just it wiped out the local food supply and the war uh, made it hard to get food there or stop food going there. And, uh, you know, this is where they were using the flamethrower. So these things can be extremely serious. So basically, um, you know, so this is some, some just some articles that are talking about the ongoing uh, locusts in uh, India, um, the swarm, and, uh, you know, 88% of the total, 107 170,000 hectares of land, affected farmland, 33% losses in each of them. And, uh, you know, basically um, the government thought that these swarms could be repelled in a week, but they continued attacking crops. They basically move with the direction of the wind, so you don't know exactly where they're going. Um, and the UN Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, put out this Desert Locust Bulletin warning of these adult locusts arriving in Pakistan. The Indian officials said that the Pakistani uh, counterparts did not inform them in time to prepare for the situation. So just throw the blame elsewhere. You know, government did compensate for some of the losses, but nowhere near uh, close and no, nowhere near covering the loss. Now, cumin is uh, basically it's a spice um, and um, it's a typical ingredient in many spice blends like curry powder. So it's a key ingredient to to uh, curry powder, curry powder. Um, and the lack L A K H is the um, it means it's it means a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand. Okay, one lakh, a hundred thousand. So one hundred fifty thousand rupees would be one point five lakh rupees. Probably mispronouncing it. And uh, the way it's written is, uh, you know, you write it. You could write it. You would write it like this: one comma fifty comma o o o. It's the way it would be written. Okay, so the locust attack again. Um, it's a, uh, the, the plague is a grim reminder of climate change's reality. Okay, so again, you get a change in the Indian 
ocean water temperatures. You get a change in the Indian Ocean dipole because the water is extremely warm on the western side. And you get changes in the cyclone pattern. So you get lots of water deposited on deserts and then you get these locusts um, generate, you know, perfect conditions for locust breeding. And then they cross from the deserts through into Pakistan and India. And Pakistan has declared a national emergency. And same thing with Somalia because of the locust swarms. Um, Pakistan lost 40% of its food crops by December 2019 from the locusts, according to the media. You know, th this is a huge amount of, of loss. So they, of course, imports have to go way up, food prices go way up. And again, they tie it to the rise in the frequency of cyclones over the Arabian Sea. You know, dumping more and more water on the deserts, allowing the locusts to breed in huge numbers. And then the locusts, they, out, they strip it, the food in an area and then they go um, nomadic and they fly with the help of winds from uh, Africa to Arabia and then onwards through Iran into Pakistan and India. Okay, so over many months, they eventually reach South Asia. Okay, and then in Pakistan, uh, well, there's a desert, the Thar Desert, in both India and Pakistan on the border, and that also got unexpected rainfall, making conditions conducive for the locusts to lay their eggs and for them to multiply and get more swarming. The rain leads to the spouting, sprouting of desert vegetation, and that leads to more breeding of locusts. They've got a ready food supply, so they just multiply and multiply and multiply. So these pests are changing their behavior and adapting to changing climate. Locusts that leave India at the onset of winter are now spending winter there in India. And then when they go back to southern Iran to rest, they'll be there, the conditions are still conducive for them to multiply because, in the, because there's unusually heavy rains in those areas, so they can then again multiply and rebuild and uh, you know come up to another swarm. Okay, so there's, uh, you know, they've been plaguing East Africa. Um, They've been, uh, they've been, uh, you know, this is explaining the the Indian Ocean dipole, which I've talked about. Uh, government completely unaware, you know, just not prepared, not having the stations, not expecting these things to come. Billions of locusts swarm over East Africa. I'm just showing you some headlines here. Climate change behind Africa's worst locust um, invasion in in decades. You know, and then there's, uh, you know, articles about the swarm posing the most serious threat since 1993, like covering more hectares of land in India, um, more about the damage of the different types of crops, um, locust army from Pakistan. See the, the headline, you know, it's an army from Pakistan ravaging the crops in India. How's that for, for, uh, you know, blame the other guys. Blame the con blame blame the other country. These bugs are eating into Pakistan's already fragile economy. You know, forty percent crop losses, like massive crop losses. Even cotton production down twenty percent because of the uh, locust swarms. So the, there's huge economic implications of this. Um, you know, and it, it's talking about. Uh, you know, Pakistan was targeting economic growth of 3.5 to 4 percent um, in the current fiscal year ending June from a year ago, but a lower cotton output could shave off as much as 25 basis points. So that would be 3.5 going to 3.25. You know, 100 basis points is, is 1 percent. Uh, worst invasion of locusts hit Sard Sardinia. So it's not just in, um, it's not just in India and Pakistan and Africa. Sardinia is an Italian island. Okay, and I'll just show you here. Here we go way up to here. And this is the island of Sardinia off Italy. And uh, they basically had a locust swarm there, which did tremendous damage to the economy of that island. So basically climate change Rain in the desert, conditions ideal for breeding locusts, leading to locust swarms. Thank you for listening.